Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this week's Clarity Soft training webinar. Today is Tuesday, August 24th, 2021. I'm Susan Arnold, Implementation Specialist here at Clarity Soft. And today our topic is importing data into Clarity Soft Live. This is a very important skill to learn because it can save you lots of time. Instead of manually entering data record by record, you can bring data in from various sources. Um, and we will talk about those various sources as we move along here. So today what we're going to be doing um, is first of all, discussing data cleanup and preparation tips. There's a certain way that the data needs to be formatted um, in the spreadsheets that you bring in. Um, and we'll learn some different techniques that you see listed there. And then we will do three different um, imports, one for accounts, one for contacts, and one for activities. And then we also will probably do an update for accounts so you know how to do an update import. So we have a lot of work to do. Basically, your data, when you're coming to Clarity CRM, can come from different sources. You may be coming from another CRM in which case you can export the data out of that CRM into Excel format and then do whatever cleanup or preparation might need to be done um, in Excel, and then we can bring it into ClaritySoft. The second location might be from your Outlook. You might have a lot of contacts in your Outlook, and that's where you've been working. Um, so you can export your contacts to an Excel file, and again, do whatever cleanup needs to be done to prepare it. It comes out in the format that is necessary for coming into ClaritySoft, but you just might need to make sure your data is complete, you know, accurate, all consistent, all of those things. And then the other place it might come from would be spreadsheets that maybe you've been tracking all your different prospects and customer customers in separate spreadsheets on your sales team. And so you would like to be able to get all of those into ClaritySoft so that all of you are working on that central or from that central database location. So as long as you can get the data into Excel, we can get it into ClaritySoft. And then, like I said, it just depends on how clean <laughs> the data is, how much work you might have to do to prepare that data to come in. So with that, I'm going to go to my Clarity Soft here first. And <clears throat> to help you as you prepare your information, um, if you go to the question mark in Clarity Soft and click on Knowledge Base, then in the search, you can just type import and it will come up with the topic CS Live import records. At this location, you will find templates. And these templates basically show you how the data needs to be structured, okay? Because your account name needs to be in its own column, your street address needs to be in a column. If there's a second address line, needs to be a separate column than city, state, and zip code. If you're coming from another CRM, most likely that data is going to be separated out as it needs to be because it is another database. Um, the only one that is a bit of a <laughs> problem is if you're exporting data out of QuickBooks. When data exports out of QuickBooks, it sticks the full address all in one column and you need to split it out, which is a bit of a chore. Um, if you're working in a spreadsheet, you may have done the same thing where you type, you know, the full street address, city, state, zip code all in one column. Um, so you might have to split that out. But for the most part, you know, if you're coming from another database, you should be fine. Um, also, you'll notice here that accounts and contacts have two separate templates. If you are coming from another CRM, it probably will send it out to separate templates, um, as you see here. 
if you're coming from Outlook, your contacts and your accounts will all be in the same spreadsheet. That is perfectly fine. Do not, do not, do not go to all the trouble to split them into two separate sheets. All we do is import the account information first from your Outlook spreadsheet, and then we import the contact information second, all from the same sheet. So I always like to caution people on that. They kind of go in a panic mode and say, oh no, I got to split all this out. You do not. Okay, um, so you can download these templates and then take a look at them to see what the structure needs to be and what information is needed. The other thing I suggest you download is our user's guide here. And this will give you information on all the different, well, the process to follow and everything, but then at the most useful part here is at the end where we list each module and then we give you the Clarity Soft fields, the standard Clarity Soft fields, the names of them, whether it's required or not, and what type data field it is and its maximum length. This can be important, especially on the account name Sometimes you're working with companies or organizations that have very long names and you need to get them down to 48 characters in order to be able to import them, okay? So <laughs> you wanna look at this and here are contacts. So it shows you when you're importing contacts, you must have the account name with the contact and a first name and last name split, okay? Um, so these are, this is very helpful here to look at, to see what is required and what the maximum lengths of those fields are. So I suggest you download this, save it, and then print the document, but don't print the first page because it sucks up too much ink, <laughs> okay? So that is there. So use that as a resource in, your, um, in the knowledge base. That will get you started there. Um, then your next step will be to look at your data, either that's coming out of your other CRM or a spreadsheet and look at the custom fields or the columns of data that you have. Because when you are in a Clarity Soft record, there are certain data fields that are standard, like the address and the phone but then you may have some additional fields that are specific to your business that you've put into your spreadsheet to track. And if you have done that in your spreadsheet, then you need to add those fields into ClaritySoft before you can import the data because there won't be anywhere for it to go. So you can see here in my record, I've added a type field that's a drop down multi select with choices. I've added a business sector field, okay? I've added an industry field. So again, you would put in what you need and then in your spreadsheet, you would look at what options you have in that spreadsheet because the spellings of the options in the spreadsheet would need to match the way you spell them in ClaritySoft. So you need to, otherwise there will be issues with the import. So you just, need to analyze all of that, get those custom fields in, set the data types for what they need to be, and then that's ready to go, okay? So there's some upfront preparation that you need to make in the database first. Um, and then once you have that, then you're ready to look at your actual data. And so, I have a spreadsheet here. Let's see here. Maximize this. So my spreadsheet here actually has both the account information and the contact information in the same sheet. It is not split out, okay? So you can see this is in pretty decent shape here. It's pretty organized. Um, when you have contact information in the same sheet as your account, you'll usually have multiple account names because you're accommodating multiple people, all right? What will happen when you import the accounts, 
Clarity Soft will create the first record for 1 800 cupcake. And then it's going to say, oh, this is a duplicate. I'm skipping it. I'm skipping it. I'm skipping it. I'm skipping it. This is a new record. This is a duplicate. So when you're importing your accounts, you might have 200 rows, but it might only import 150 because you have multiple contacts. And that's fine. Um, you will receive an email at the end of your import when it completes that will tell you the results. And if it says duplicates for all the accounts, then you did, it's perfect. Um, if you've got some other errors then you might need to fix those, okay? But that's what you're going to get if your accounts are mixed together with your contacts. Then when your contacts go in, you have one, two, three, four, five contacts for one company, and those will all come as separate contacts. OK, so anyway, that's the structure. And then you can see over here, if you do have the information, we have separate email addresses for people. You might have the same phone number for everybody, but perhaps a different extension. And then the address may be the same for everyone. OK, so the address. Now, these were copied and you can see these weren't copied correctly because <laughs> they shouldn't be, they should all be the same, okay? So anyway, um, your addresses will all be the same. And this is what you want to check because with your account record, the first one that goes in, it's going to take this information into that account. It's not going to put in anything that's in row two, you know, the next rows where it's duplicate, but it will put these addresses in for the contacts. So you'll see it kind of mushroom <laughs> as you start to clean up like, oh, these addresses are different or they're spelled differently or something and you start cleaning up. Okay, so some of the techniques that you need to use in cleaning up. Um, one of them is if you do have accounts. I've got these Ambrosia boutiques down here. These are all the same name, which, as I just said about the 800 cupcake is fine. But when I scroll over to the address columns, I see, oh, well, these guys are on one street. These are on another street and these are on a third different location. And this happens a lot of times where you might have um, companies that you work with in different locations around the country. And so you want to create a separate account for each location. Okay. So what we have to do then is come back over here. And this is how you use that site field that's in the account record. A lot of people look at that and say, how is that used? What is that for? Well, this is what you do. The site field allows you to put something in that identifies one location from the other. It can be a city, it can be a city and a state, it can be, you know, some other location, but it's something that makes it unique because what Clarity Soft does is it takes this and this and puts them together to create an account name. But underneath, it's storing them separately. So that if you're doing a mail merge, you're not sending, when you choose the account name, you're not saying Ambrosia Boutique, Southgate Mall as the company name, you're just saying Ambrosia Boutique, okay? So this is the purpose of this. It's why it was designed so that you could uniquely identify um, one account from another. So there's a lot of different ways to use it. Um, like if you're working with a bunch of Pizza Huts, they have a store number that you could put in. So each one would have a unique code for their store and that could go in. So it can be anything. It's a, it's a text field and you have up to 16 characters that you can use in that field. So you'll see as I go down here, there's one here that I put in and there's a few other down here where they're in Buffalo and Syracuse. So Again, you decide what's the best way to handle it um, within your database with your data. So that's technique one 
using the site field, 90% of what you put in may not need it. So you don't need to put one in. It's only where you have a situation where the same company name is in different locations. Okay. Now, another one is <coughs> the length of the account name and actually the length of any other things in the database. Um, and if you have, you know, just a few records, meaning maybe less than three or 400, it's not too bad to figure out, but how do you, you know, are, do you wanna go down and count all of these? No, you don't wanna do that. So Excel has this lovely formula, which some of you may know, that is the length formula that if I put this in, point to here, press enter, this tells me that has 13 characters. And then all I need to do is scroll, pull, copy it down. And I can see that I have 13 and then suddenly I have 56. Now I did this again. I forgot to turn off the conditional formatting, but the way I got this pink is I went up to the home ribbon here, I'm just kind of sliding my um, oops, toolbar out of the road. And I go to conditional formatting, highlight cells rules greater than. And then I type in 48 because that importer guide told me that the maximum number of characters an account can have is 48. So when I click that, then anything that's this is greater than 48 turns this pink and red, okay? And I would copy this down my whole thing. Then if you wanted to, you could sort, you know, from the largest to the smallest and bring those to the top and then make fixes, whatever you wanna do. Um, I could see them right here. So my fix would be, I have 56 characters, so I have to get rid of a few. So I kind of look at this and say, well, what would be, a you know, kind of a logical way to do this where I'm not destroying the name. So I'm gonna hit here and I'm gonna say, well, I can take center to CTR. How does that work? That's 53. So I still need to get rid of some more characters. So maybe instead of using the word and, I can put the ampersand in, up, oh, still need a few more. So maybe I might just, decide, okay, I could shorten services to SVCS, or I could go over here and do Albany, New York, and just make it NY. Again, you want to make sure it seems logical, especially if you are, um, you know, going to eat, going to send things with mailings that you want the name in. So I'm down to 45 now. Notice my pink goes away, and then I'm just going to copy this down to there. So those are fixed. So that's what you need to do. And by using that length formula, you can type your fixes and then immediately see how many characters you have and how many you may need to go. Um, this is very common in, I'm going to say, medical areas where it's some of the facilities have very long names. The other field that you probably want to pay attention to for length is the title. Many people have these long titles. And um, so you want to <coughs> put in a, just insert a column and put the formula in like, here's one that's very long. I'm gonna leave this here because I have a reason for doing that. But just know that you would want to check your titles. Sometimes you might need to check street addresses. You know, you gotta check to make sure they didn't put some great big long thing with mail stop this and building that and you know whatever. So you might wanna check that. Usually your cities are fine, um, but you wanna check those things. And it doesn't hurt to put it in. It's such an easy formula to add. It only takes a few minutes. Okay, so we've done the length formula. The other issue that you run into sometimes is people, <laughs> type in all caps, okay? Um, or sometimes you're coming from an older database that might have only done all caps, that's possible too. 
but also a lot of people just like to hit that caps lock key so they don't have to use the shift key and then they type away. Well, that's fine until you want to communicate outward from your CRM. And then if you're say pulling in the first name field, um, then suddenly you're saying, hello, cat in all caps. And then the, your email is beautiful, but as soon as Kat sees this, she's going to say, oh, man, this is an email blast. Boom, delete, not even read it. So you want to take the time to fix it. Um, and the way you do that, again, you insert a column. And then you're going to use a formula called proper. So point to here, fixes it, and then you can copy it down. And I'm just going to do it in this little area here. So you can see it fixed cat, Isabel, and Ryan, which were all caps, but it also fixed Myra here. Myra was all lowercase, and it put a capital letter at the beginning. Okay. So the proper works nicely. You might find yourself inserting columns for first name, for last name, or city for state everywhere through your database in order or your spreadsheet in order to get everything back to proper case, which is absolutely fine. And then what I usually do is I would change this column here. I like to preserve my original column. So I would change this to like first name upper like that. And then I could make this one either just first name, because that's the one that's going to go in, okay? Or I could call it first name proper. Um, also notice the, the formula is still here, and that's okay. Clarity Soft will take, the importer will ignore the formula and take the result, um, which is great. Um, so you can leave the formula, um, but if you wanna get rid of it, you can just select, the column, and then I'm doing a control C for copy, or you can do a right click, and then I'm doing a right click and I'm saying paste values. So when I do that, notice it's down to just Isabella here. The formula is gone. So you can do that. Either way you want to do that works fine. Um, but that's a way to fix. Um, with the proper case. Now, one thing I will warn you about though, if you have to do proper case over in your uh, accounts, you see LLC here, what will happen is it will capitalize the L and then lowercase the second L and the C. So you may still have to go down and do sick, uh, fixes. Same thing here. It will capitalize the first A, but everything else will be lowercase. So unless you are a real super duper Excel person and can tell it to pay attention to that sort of stuff, then uh, you'll have to do some fixing. But yeah, you'll just have to check as you go down. But it sure beats retyping all of it. So it gives you a start. All right. So that's our length formula and our, tech, our uh, proper case. Okay. Now, the other one that can happen, especially if you are typing in your own spreadsheet, is that you've put a first and a last name for the person in one column, okay? Now, my sheet is already spread out here, and I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this column for right now. Um, and I will fix these. Just so they're ready to go. Okay, and then I'll fix this one. Okay, so, but what I want to show you here, when you need to split your names, you're going to insert a bunch of columns. And go ahead and just put a whole bunch in. You can delete ones later. So what you're going to do then is select your column, okay? 
And then if you are, you need to go to the data tab and you will see about two thirds of the way across text to columns. And it opens a nice wizard for you to step through. So the first question it's asking you is, well, when we do this, are we going to use a delimited type of splitting or a fixed width? Well, the names obviously are different lengths, so we can't use fixed width. So we're gonna use delimit. I would say that 99% of the time, that's what you're going to do. Um, then you click next. Then you say, okay, well, what is the delimiter or the separator? Well, in this case, it's the space. And then you can see down here how your names are splitting. And you can kind of scroll down to see. It'll go down your whole spreadsheet. And you can see that some of my names are actually going out three columns, okay? Which is okay. So then I click next. Now, the next step is kind of up to you how you do this. Um, first of all, you're going to say general format for the data. That's fine. But the second thing here, the destination, this is where do you want the splitting to start? Notice that this is saying an E1, which is the column where my original names are, is in column E. Well, I don't like to do that because I like to keep my original name, you know, as it is. So if I can need to look at it to see how it was put together in the first place, I can. So what I always do is I click in here and I just take this out and say, I want you to start in column F. So it's going to start here and go out. And then you click finish. Now it's saying there's already data there, okay? Now that could be because you don't have enough columns in here. It also could be because there's formatting. And I think this is because there's formatting here. I'm gonna click okay and notice how it splits. But if you do okay, you wanna come over here and make sure the data in this column here did not get wiped out. Because if you say OK, and it's got some squirrely name down at the bottom of the list, it'll wipe out this whole column. So then you undo and add some more columns. But usually, if there's some sort of formatting there, like borders or whatever, and because this had fill up here, that's why it's saying something's already there. Or if I had started here and selected down without selecting the heading, would have been fine. Now. Notice Ryan here has a middle initial. And so here's where everybody's like, oh shoot, now what do I do? Well, here's what I do. I'm gonna stick his middle initial over here, okay? And then I need to get his last name in the last name column because 90% of my last names are in that column, okay? So then I can do this. I'm using control X and control V. Okay, now those are fixed. Now I get down here to Anne Marie. Well, Anne Marie, probably Anne Marie goes together in the first name field. Okay, so I'm gonna fix that. And then I'm gonna take Lawler and put it in the last name field. Now notice I did put a space here. That's okay because when you import it, it's gonna import that Anne Marie with the space into the first name field in Clarity Soft and all is good, okay? Um, and then down here with Daniel, this could be his middle name or it could be he has a double last name. So if he's got a double last name, then I'm just going to do this. Okay. And I would just keep going down here. I'm using control plus the down arrow to jump to the next C. 
situation and you can see, okay, this should be part of the last name and then I'm deleting. So you, you see, you're still gonna need to make some fixes with that. And then I have just two initials. So this column is empty and I can double check it by clicking at the top and doing control plus the down arrow jumps me to the bottom of the spreadsheet. There's nothing there. So I can take this column out and then I can come back here and I can call this first name. Oops. Last name middle. And then somebody's going to say, whoa, whoa, they're out of order. They're out of order. Doesn't matter to clear the importer. Who cares? Okay. Oops. Get the right key here. Okay. In case you guys are wondering what I'm doing to delete my columns, I'm selecting the column. Then I'm hitting the alt key on the keyboard, which if you notice, it jumps up here. Then I'm hitting E for edit and then D for delete. Okay. So that's how I'm doing that. Oops. So I did an undo there. So if I want to get rid of these two columns, I select them Alt E D. If I want to insert columns, Alt I C tricks. Okay. And then alt E D. <laughs> okay. So that's how you would do that. The middle, you don't have to move things around. Just leave it right there. It's perfectly fine. Okay. Um, so now we have split our contact names into their various parts. And we do have a prefix on some of them. Okay. And so over here, they're already split into with middle initials. So everything's already done over here. So I'm gonna come back and just get rid of these columns here that we just worked on, okay? All right, so that is using text to columns. Now, next one, the other thing you can run into is inconsistency in state names. Some people type the two letter abbreviation, some people type the full name. So you want to fix those to make them one or the other, it doesn't matter. I usually recommend going to the two letter abbreviations just because it e it's easier and it, you just have to force everybody to learn them. So. What you want to do, and the easiest way to do this, is if you click in your column heading up here, and then you go to the data menu, and you click and turn on the filter. See, I've turned the filters off. You can turn the filters on for your columns. You can also do that under, I think, under find and replace. Then I click here, and I just scroll down to see what I've got. So, OK, I've got Georgia. All right, I've got Maryland and the rest are okay. So what I do is just simply select the column and go back to my home ribbon and I do a, a replace and I'm gonna find G-E-O-R-G-I-A and I'm going to replace it with GA. And then you can click replace all. Now be careful to make sure you have selected this column. You don't have this going for the entire spreadsheet. Okay. Um, so if you do that, you click replace all. It says it made four. Okay. You're done. Then I can sit here while I still have the column selected. Find Maryland type in MD, replace all, done, okay? So it's just something that if you use these filters, you can see where your mistakes are, where you need to make the corrections and then simply use a find and replace or you can filter for just those and make the fixes, whatever needs to be done. Um, 
but that's there for you to use anytime. Okay. And you might need to do that. Usually states need to be done and uh, countries sometimes. Those countries are all over the, you know, spellings are all over the place. Some are USA, some are United States, some are United States of America, whatever. So just check those to make sure they're A OK. All right. That's find and replace. Now, the next one that comes up a lot of times for people in their database, they have created what we call a multi select dropdown. And so the question is can I import into that field? And yes, you can. What you need to do is in your column for that data field, you need to add my drop down is option one, two, three, four, five. So those are simple. Um, so you would know what your options are, what your choices are in your drop down list. And then you would type what choices need to go with this particular record. Now, the choices need to be separated by a semicolon. So this one here is absolutely correct. It's option three, semicolon, option four, semicolon, option five. That will go in correctly and it will put check marks in those boxes under that data field. These are incorrect here because they're separated by a comma and a space. No problem, as long as it's consistent. Inconsistency is your killer. <laughs> Consistency is good. I can select, I mean, I could select the whole column, um, but I can just see this area here. I can select the data, use my find and replace again, but this time what I'm going to find is, whoops, a comma and a space. And then I'm going to replace it with a semicolon. Okay. And then if I click replace all, bingo, done. Okay. Now, if you're not sure how to do this or you're, you know, practice on a few rows like this to make sure it works and then go from there. Um, but this really makes it easy to fix that because sometimes you have maybe put something like this in columns um, and you can just use a quick find and replace as long as it's consistent. Now, the other thing that can occur is you may have set up three different columns for this where you have option three, option four, option five, or some people put X's in and they split them out over columns. That gets more complex, but there is a formula in Excel called concatenate. And whereas the text to columns splits things apart, concatenate allows you to combine them back together. So if you have a situation like that, um, Look up concatenate um, and it will tell you and your help in Excel how to do it. And then you can figure that one out. Um, but that's another one that allows you to glue things back together that you've split apart. So sometimes with text to columns, you can split things apart, kind of make some fixes and then glue certain pieces back together. So there's a lot of tips and tricks you can do in Excel. Excel is a pretty amazing program. All righty. Now, where are we here? We haven't done any importing yet. Okay, the last suggestion is create a custom field in your accounts and your contacts, um, and maybe in opportunities if you're doing those, called import source or whatever file source, whatever you want to call it. Just make it a custom field as a text field. And then you're going to put in the name of the file. So I'm gonna call this um, uh, and contacts. And then I'm gonna to put today's date. I'm just gonna put 08242021. So you can put the file name in, whatever you wanna call it. The purpose of this is if you put in say 200 records, 
into your database where you already maybe have some other data in there. This allows you to search on the import source and pull up that list that you just imported because maybe you made a mistake and you need to delete them and start over again. Now, here's another trick, folks. If I start dragging this down, see how it does two, 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 three, two, four? Yeah, I don't want that. I want the 21 to go down. So what you have to do instead is copy, do a copy and then a paste. And here's another little trick. I want to get to the bottom of my list. I'm going to do control down, takes me to the bottom, and then I'm going to go down one more, and then I'm going to put XX here, and that's my stopper. And then I'm going to do control up. I'm going to do control C, down one, control and shift. I'm holding down with my left hand and I'm hitting down arrow with my right and I jump down to my stopper and highlight it, control V to paste, control down to go to the one that's extra, delete it, control up, done. Okay, so that's how you do that. All right, so we are ready to import. I'm gonna save my file. And I'm gonna say that 90% of the time, you can leave your file open while you're doing your import. I have found some people that cannot. So you'll just have to try it. If you get an error message when you're trying to do the import, then you close the file. Um, but on most people's computers, you can leave it open. Okay, here we go. To import, you're going to import accounts first, then contacts, and then you can import you know, any other opportunities, quotes, sales. Um, leads are separate, so they can go in any time. Click on the tools menu, which is this little square button. Import takes you to the importer. And the first thing you do is select what is your import type. So you pick your one you can do. Notice there are leads and there is a price book. You can import a price book. Some of these other ones here are custom modules in mine. So ignore those, but we're gonna do accounts first. Then you have an option, create new records only or create new records and update existing records. Well, we're just putting brand new ones in. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna choose our file and we have this here. And then it has you select a worksheet. Now you can have multiple worksheets in the workbook. So you wanna make sure you pick the correct one. And again, if you have the file open, you can go look at it to confirm. And now we have in the leftmost column here, all of the clarity soft fields, and they are listed in alphabetical order. And then on the right-hand side, we're gonna match the Excel data column to the clarity soft field. So this is why the order of the columns does not matter nor does the spelling of the column heading matter, okay? This is always the big thing that people get very nervous about and you, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna choose over here is account name, which is the Clarity Soft name in my spreadsheet, it's account. Address one, the spelling is the same, so they automatically mapped. Business sector, I do not believe I have that in this spreadsheet, but I can look. I think it's in my update one. And you just scroll down and look, okay? And if there's nothing there, you don't need to match it. Only the ones that have the red next to them are required. And in, in accounts, it's only the account name. Nothing else needs to go in. Then we have city, we have country, device, device type, fax, import source. So you can see if things are spelled the same way, they do match, okay? Um, industry, I don't have in this sheet, okay? Um, but lead source, I do. If you guys haven't noticed this, lead source is spelled about 17 ways within ClaritySoft, which is most confusing because it's all the same field. So you'll see there. Owner is going to be the user who, 
owns that record. If you don't have an owner field, no worries. Um, you just leave this blank and then all the records will automatically belong to you as the importer or whoever's importing and then you can change it later. So phone is there. Shipping address you do not need to do unless you have a completely separate set of columns for shipping address. It will just default to the original. Then this one is important, site field. Site goes with the account name and should be at the top right under account because they go together. Um, but it's in alphabetical order. So you definitely, if you've used the site field, then you wanna make sure that is mapped, okay? And then your state, your territory, your type, website. I don't think I have a website in here, no. And again, you can go back and look at your spreadsheet if you've got a bunch of custom fields and you can't remember. And then zip code is spelled differently. Where is it? There it is. Okay. So once you've mapped all your fields, just go up and check. Green means it's mapped. Yellow is it's not mapped and it's optional whether you do it or not. Okay. Um, and then you click import file and then import data, and then OK. Now, while we're waiting for this a little bit, there is a restriction on the number of records that you can import during business hours. It's set to 5,000 for each, everybody's database. You can still do the upload here, but you will receive a message that says, oh, you're over the limit, and your import will be deferred until after 6 PM, after business hours. And so you can just walk away and let it go. And then it, when you come back in the next morning or wherever, whenever you come later, it'll, it'll do itself on its own. Um, so, or if you want to get it in and see what's going on, then you can go back to your spreadsheet and split, you know, split your file into two separate spreadsheets or tabs and then import it broken into two smaller pieces. But we have this now, we're importing accounts. It gives us the file name, who's doing it, when it's uploaded. And when I click refresh, it is already completed, okay? So it's, it will go from, re, from uploaded to processing to completed. Then over here, it's telling me there were 200 records. It imported 176 and it skipped 24. Okay, so then the question is, well, what did it skip? So you will get in your Outlook an email that gives you these results. And so you scroll down. And remember I said, if it's a duplicate, that's good news. So perfect. We basically had a perfect import because the only thing that was skipped were duplicates for the account names. So we'll give ourselves a star because we fixed the length on that one that was too long. Otherwise it would have had a problem. Okay, now if you do get errors, this tells you the row where it goes and you go back to the spreadsheet, go to that row and make whatever fix it tells you to make, all right? Now let's move forward to our contacts. Um, then I'm gonna come right here and I can go back real quick to here and there are all my, all my accounts. So 176 were imported and I had one already in there. So they're 177, all righty. So let's go back to import. We'll do contacts. We're gonna create new records. We're going to choose the same file because the contacts are in the same file and then make sure you choose the same worksheet or you could have a mess. And then we map. So these three are required. Account, first name. Let's see, what did I do here? Did I wipe out stuff? I did, I changed that so I can map that. Map that, address city, country, email mapped, import source. See, so you can see now here's um, 
middle name right here. Okay, mobile phone, owner, phone, prefix name. We did have a prefix column. Okay, salutation. Usually, if you don't have a separate salutation column, I forgot to mention this. This is for nickname type stuff. I just map it to first name again. So um, you can do either one. And then site, you definitely want to make sure you do the site. Otherwise, there'll be a mismatch on the account name, state, suffix if you have it. Again, if you don't have these, no big deal. Title, type, and zip code. So you can see it's pretty easy. Once you get your data cleaned up, you're in good shape. It takes just a few minutes to import. You guys all thought you were going to be here till four o'clock. No. <laughs> so now I have a question. So somebody is asking me, what's the best way to view all the contacts imported in one go without having to search them individually? Well, they would be in your list. I'm not sure I quite understand that. So here we go. We found 200 records, imported 196, and skipped four, okay? And I'll get my import report here. So meanwhile, let's go back. So now we can see in ClaritySoft, if we go to the contacts module, there are all our contacts. And notice with Ryan, I did not fix his last name. So it comes in proper case or uppercase. So I would need to go in and fix that. But I have 197 contacts because there were multiple contacts for some of the companies. And you can see here with um, 1-800-CUPCAKE, it's listed five times here because there are five contacts. And that's exactly what we saw in the spreadsheet before. So here is my email. And it tells me now what went in and what didn't. So remember that title I said I was going to leave it long on purpose? Well, there it is, row seven. This did not go in, this contact, because the title was too long. So I would need to go back to my spreadsheet, fix that, and then re-import. Also, at row 14, I have an incorrect uh, email format. That's the other thing to look for is look for valid emails, because that can be another error that occurs. So I, those are the four records that skipped. So I would need to go to these rows, make the fixes, save the spreadsheet, and then re-import and create new records. And it should add those four new records. So you just it's just a logical process to do, OK? Um, Oh, you're asking how you would filter. Okay, you can look at creation date. All of your records, when they come into ClaritySoft, it assigns a creation date, wherever it is. Do they already have it here? Okay, why can't I see creation date over here? Plan options, device sorts. <laughs> there is a creation date field. Why am I not seeing it? Because it's right there. Okay, thought I put it at. So creation date. So you can see all of these are created today. Okay, that's one way to filter. If you're just going in brand new, but later um, you might do it. The other way is to filter on this import source. Then you can pull up by the import source name and you would get the list that you just put in. And to change the owner, you can easily, you know, find the records if they all went under you and you can go down the side and select ones that need to belong to a particular person and then choose group edit and then select owner and update the owner, okay? So 
there are techniques for doing a batch of things and you could change them all to Jim Smith and apply and those records selected now belong to Jim Smith. So that's how you can do that. Or you could do an update import if you go back to your spreadsheet and fix the owner fields next to it, you could just update, do an update import and fix all the owners. So there's multiple ways to do that, okay? Um, yes, well, okay, the name, oh, the name error of Ryan, absolutely. I would not go back to the spreadsheet you're talking about here. I would just open Ryan's record and fix his name, absolutely, okay? So that's the best way to fix him. Now, if you imported a thousand records that way, I don't think you'd want to do that, okay? <laughs> but actually the update import will not work on that, okay? So that's why I'm glad you asked that question actually. On the accounts and the contacts, if you import with uppercase, you cannot do an update and change it to lowercase. You would have to delete the records and start over again. Make the fix in the spreadsheet first because it won't write over lower uppercase with lowercase. The importer will not recognize the difference. So it would just skip them all, okay? So I'm glad you asked that question. That's a good question to know. All right, now last thing here, we want to do activities. Um, I have a spreadsheet here with activities in it. With your activities, again, when you go to those import templates, it will tell you what you need. You need the account name. You need the first and last name. You need the activity type, okay? And a subject line. You have to have some text in there. And then you need a start date and you need a start time, but just make up a time because who cares? You don't need to have a due date. It has it there, but it can be the start date, okay? The complete date is when you completed the activity. If it is completed, it could be in the future. And the end date again is these, if you have a start date and a completed date, you're good, okay? Um, and then the status is either going to be completed or in process. So if something is in process, there will not be a completed date because it's out in the future, okay? So you can bring things in that are scheduled for the future. And then is calendar means it's going to be placed on the calendar, true or false. Um, you can set a priority. It should have an owner, which will be a user, and then an assigned to. An owner is who creates the activity, and the assigned to is who is supposed to do it. Usually they're the same, but they could be different. And then you want your notes. The main thing you want when you're bringing activities in are, are your notes. Um, for those of you that might be coming from another CRM, a lot of times they do not have the activity type here. And, or it would be a royal chore to, to figure it all out. So what I usually suggest to people is create an activity type called history, make everything a history activity type, and then it comes in because your main thing is you want your notes, okay? Um, and so that's the big thing. And so this is what we do. We've got our spreadsheet set up. Okay, I'm going to go to import. And I'm going to answer your question about contact notes while the activities are coming in. So I'm going to choose activities. Notice here you cannot do an update on activities. You can only bring in new records. Just be aware of that. Choose your file. And then up here, select your worksheet again. Now this one did automatically select a worksheet. It's a little bit different. So pay attention to that. It's a bit of an inconsistency. And just make sure if you have multiple worksheets, you're pointing to the one you want. Okay, so again, required fields. We must have an account name. The activity type in my spreadsheet is activity. 
first name, last name are there, and then we must have a start date, okay? Um, start time is already there. Subject it mapped to, assigned to is here. Complete date, you want complete date for those that you know you completed. So that's there. Complete time, again, make up a time. Who cares what time of the day it was done? It's just the way they design this. The end date and the end time, you don't need. It's not worth it. Or just do the start date and the whatever. You don't need it. Is calendar there? Location is just a text field. You may or may not have that, but your most important one is your notes, okay? And then owner mapped, priorities there. And then this case, my site field is in with my account name. I did not split it out into two columns, so I'm okay. And then status. So I have my fields mapped, import my data. And while that's uploading, so is it possible to import notes on a contact? Yes, you can use the description field in the contact record. When you open a contact, you have this big box up here where you could import notes into there. And that's called description in the contact record. Okay, um, so you could do that. Um, if you also could take notes and make them into an activity, put them in an activity format and then bring them in as an activity. Sometimes that takes longer than it's worth <laughs> worrying about, but it just depends. So that you can put there if you have a column with just a bunch of notes you want to bring in. Okay. Um, so let me go back to my. Well, I can probably just go to activities and see what's there. So there are my activities. All my activities have come in. And these, these are the ones belonging to me. So I have 681 that came in. Um, I don't, and there's my email. Hold on, I've got my email buried back here. So it said it in brought in 554, but I somehow have 681. I'm not quite sure how that occurred. <laughs> I haven't figured that one out, but all my activities did come in. I didn't get any mismatches or anything like that. So then you have your activities and then you can use your filters up here. So for example, if I look at today's activities, I had this happen to me yesterday. Hold on. Got some weird ones. So these are completed activities and you can see the completed date. They go back to 2019. Okay. And then if I do today's again, I shouldn't get these. These are old. I had this happen yesterday. So nothing for me tomorrow. But I should have one activity for today. So I'm not sure. See, there it is. That's the one I should have for today. The rest of these should be completed. So it's my data is probably not 100% clean. Um, future activities. This is looking at things out into the future. So you can see these go out to December. And if I click here, they start on uh, Thursday and they go on out to the end of the year. So I have 178 future activities in here. So they should come in. Um, again, usually if you're bringing um, activities from another CRM, which is most likely where it's coming from, not a spreadsheet you've been tracking, um, you, you really want your notes and that's your most important thing that you want. So, you know, work it out that you can get those in a format to bring them in. And like I said, if you want to create one activity type for history, then everybody knows that, oh, those all came from our other CRM. And so then you, you know, as you move forward, then you start using your emails and your tasks and your calls and all that sort of thing. Okay. Any other questions?
I think I got everybody's questions. So have at it. Um, and like I said, if you, if you mess up something, if you go to accounts, you can search on your import source. So I can go to my import source field and start typing accounts. I think I can find it this way if I spell it right. They're all the same anyway, except for one. Okay. So see, I got 176 records because that one that I had in there had no import source. And if I have royally screwed this up, I can just select. I can go to actions, say delete, all records, um, actually all filtered records because there's more than 100 and then click apply. And then it's gonna warn me, I'm gonna delete 176 accounts and all the contacts and activities. So it's gonna clear out my entire database. So if you screw up, you know, can do that and then you can start over again. You know, now, obviously, if you've already got data in your database, you got to be really careful, but you can do that. Now, I'm going to close this because I don't want to do this right now. I'll do it later. But that's what that import source is for, to allow you to filter and find those records that you might want to delete because you did something wrong. Okay. Um, oh, last one. The eyes are still hanging in there. So. We're going to do a quick update. So on this one, where is it? Here it is. OK, now this spreadsheet that I'm going to do now has data in it that for the business sector, that I don't have in there. So it has business sector industry and I wanna do an update import. So this would apply to maybe changing the owner. You go back to your spreadsheet, you set your owners correct, and then you can come in and do an update. So I've chosen the file, choose my spreadsheet. And then here you only need to map what you need to update. So you have to map the account name. I don't need or want the address. So now you're unmapping stuff, but I want business sector. I don't need city. Hello. Got to scroll up. So you just kind of go down through. I do want device. Okay. I want industry. If you were doing the owner, then you would map the owner. Okay. You might only do account and owner. So you only map those fields that you need. I do need the site field. Otherwise it won't match properly. Oh darn, this thing is in the way again. Um, so I just map the fields that I need. I think I had territory, but I don't remember. Um, and then I don't need website. So I have mapped those fields that I want to update and I simply do an import. Now in this case, it is not gonna skip any duplicates. It's gonna go to each and every record and fix it. Yep, see it's processing. Okay, so here it inserted 25 new records. So it found 25 new ones to stick in for whatever reason. And then it updated, this is the update, however many it updated. So let's go back real quick and look. So now we can see business sector, industry. Um, oh, I didn't do the plan options, missed that one. Okay, but these were the two. So these were not there before and they're there now. So it goes through and it updates it. And if I had changed the owner, actually the owner should be back to the person it was because I had changed these to Jim Smith and it's back to Katie, okay? 
So hopefully that gives you some techniques to help clean up your data, which is usually the worst part of preparing your data. Once you have it prepared, it goes in very smoothly and very accurately. And it is really important to get that data as clean as possible. And this is always kind of the challenge. Um, if you're in implementation or in quick start with Linda, Mike, or myself, we very much lean on you <laughs> to get your data clean. We won't let you put it in a mess. Um, because it's like taking the kitchen junk drawer and dumping it in another drawer without doing anything to it to clean it up. And that's not what you want. So you want your data clean, organized, and in proper case and all that before you send it into your database. And you would want to do that no matter where you're going with it. So let me go back here. And I'm sorry for keeping you over, but we covered a lot and hopefully you got some good ideas. Thanks for coming. Thanks for staying. And if you need additional help, then you can certainly call our tech support team and they will be happy to help you. So you can give them a call at 888-838-7487, extension two. Um, probably the best to call them. If you email them, you know, you can do that, but I'd call them. Um, and then any suggestions for future topics, um, info at claritysoft.com, comments, whatever. And with that, go have a wonderful rest of the day. And um, if you're in Ohio or somewhere in the vicinity, stay cool. <laughs> it's hot outside. All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye.